Hey everyone, Genome here. Coming at you with kind of a surprise uh, episode here. Uh, this one has to do with something that came in the mail today. And what may you ask came in the mail today? Well, an A-OK -okay from none other than Mr. Steve Whiting. So, super unexpected. And uh, a very pleasant surprise. I have not opened it yet. It's sitting back here behind me. You might notice him. He's blocking uh, poor Wolfgang's view back there. But we'll get that out of the way here shortly. So, I figured it would be remiss of me to not... Um, actually open this up for all to see so without further ado let's go ahead and do so all right let's get said opener going you know what i should do is hopefully i don't know how many's in there or what is in there but just in case i'll get a stand ready all right let's open All right, nice and easy. My gosh, he sent me air. Thank you so much. <laughs> you uh, don't need to applaud that. Maybe a space ball reference there. I don't know, but uh, appears to be quite a bit of stuff in this box. Ah, ingenious gapping. I like it. All right. So... Clean up a bit here. I'm sure I'll edit a lot of this out. <clears throat> and here is the haul. So super stoked to see what is inside. I only need to know one thing: where they are. <laughs> Amazingly wrapped. You know, a lot of people who give an AOK -okay probably wouldn't bother. He even put. Look at this. This is how much care he put into this. He even put the tabs at the same length on the same side so it's easier to open. Oh my gosh, that's courtesy for you. Excellent. They say courtesy is dead now. I believe Steve is somewhat of a fan of my music reviews because he usually comments on them. And I do take requests, so eventually we're we'll gonna have to do one for you too. Because I've done several for other people. And it seems only fitting, so let's peel this bad boy open. Sorry, I gotta remember to hold this up. Man, this thing is well wrapped. Nothing's gonna go wrong here. <clears throat> Bang, we are not quite in there yet. Oh my goodness, I see some plastic. What? Pray tell do we have inside. Man, I am stoked. You have uh, no idea, man. I don't get a lot of AOKs -okay because I'm not really, um, I'd say, an integral part of the comics community or anything like that. But I've gotten a few of the years, you know. Um, Metarog, of course, has sent them to me. Um, Rayman, Silencer Man sent me a huge one. Uh, Unruined Simeon sent me, like, what was it? Five Omnis, whatever that. Uh, the Garth Ennis uh, Punisher run. So... Not to mention a freaking, basically a 9-8 uh, original Punisher newsstand, no less. So, you know, for what I uh, lack in quantity, I surely make up for in quantity. And uh, really appreciate everyone who sends me things. I mean, no one has to. It's just, what a great bunch of people are on YouTube, you know, and Instagram and all that. I'm sorry, I know I'm making this a little bit slower. I'm just cutting tape here, so. But I do want to give my... Sincerest thanks here. Let me read this real fast to see if something he wants right online. <laughs> okay, looks like he can read this one. And it's funny because he does mention some of the things here. You know, um, uh, Genome, I put uh, together a little A-OK -okay to show my appreciation for all you do. Keep up the music vids. Uh, they are awesome. Uh, hope you uh, enjoy the books. Hope to meet you at a con one day to just hunt, talk, and hang out. Your friend, Steve. Actually, Stone Cold Steve, but I didn't know. I don't want to get anyone in trouble. Uh, you know, in case WWF wants to uh, shut us down here. You don't know what hard times are, Daddy. Or actually, it's not that anymore. It's right WWE now. <laughs> and also, PS Graders knows rock. So I couldn't do that show without uh, the three best graders in the business with Metarog, Comic Ed 84, and even Mr. Miracle, I guess. All right, let's see here. So it looks. Like, I have a CD to review or some songs to review. Uh, he does say a fellow YouTuber plays bass on this. Uh, Funk Ralph, actually. 
814. And um, here's a picture of the back, back sleeve. I will definitely be checking this out. Dig his guitar. Freaking love the style. Nice backdrop, too, by the way. And if I'm not mistaken, those are Oakleys. I used to have a pair very similar to that when I was in the Army. So I will definitely give it a, a listen, let you know what I think, and I will try to find out the channel because if, if I'm somehow not uh, subscribed to it, I'll go subscribe to it. But he probably got that idea, uh, other than all my music reviews. I mentioned a long time ago of seeing um, uh, Robin Trower live at the House of Blues a long time ago. It was during the 20th Century Blues Tour, so maybe that turned some head there. So anyway, I'm done rambling. Let's get on to what people actually tune in to see. The book's inside. So we are greeted right off the bat with Punisher Armory. Oh, man. I actually did a review on the second one uh, earlier in the run. But, I mean, just look, look at the art. That the Punisher was graced with back then. And how could you not like this character? <laughs> Dude's got like a Tech 9 in one hand and a freaking. Is it an M209 Mini? I don't know what that is in the second hand there, but uh, yeah, just incredible. This series was really fun. It was a brilliant idea on Marvel's part to do a Punisher armory, right? And Punisher was so hot back then, they, could, they were just looking, scrambling for more things to put on the air. So let's go ahead and turn this. And we can show a little bit of appreciation there to the books. Oops. Shine. Too much shine. Do I do want to give him shine? Let me turn Wolfgang a little more toward the camera so you can see all the lovely people. He's also graced with, in case you're wondering, uh, that's Squall Leonhardt's uh, emblem from Final Fantasy VIII. Okay, well, uh, thank you for that. Whatever that was. Uh, Punch Armory. This won my comic book cover of the week uh, multiple weeks ago. Because it's freaking amazing, <laughs> let's just say. Jim Lee, Carl Potts, of course, at the height of their powers. Uh, incredible stuff. It's number two. This I definitely don't have, and I don't even think I've ever seen this one before. Um, it's the Punisher Holiday Special, number one. Check it out, man. Whoa. Freaking, it's a foil cover. It's going to be hard to see with the stuff on there. But check it out. I mean, look at that, man. Amazing. That looks like Montoya from um, Wrong Finger. This one right here looks kind of like the Montoya guy from um, Punisher War Journal number two and three. But I thought he died. Uh, as most of Punisher's enemies did. And there's Frank in side profile. There's his chest. and oh, There he is bearing down upon the... I guess that's Frank's face then down there. Didn't realize that was. But I'm not used to seeing him like that. But uh, that's, that's awesome, man. Did not even know this one existed. And I don't care what you say. The best UPC ever. Or lack thereof. Oh, this is turning to a Punisher Fest. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my. I know he did not do this. Wow. Um, I'll save those for last. Just, wow. Okay. <laughs> Sorry if I give away any kind of fun stuff there. But we have a newer book here. Deadpool vs. The Punisher. And I'll tell you what, and it's got the... Um, like the Day of the Dead, Titus Skull from Mexico, or whatever. Very interesting. There'd be a, a matchup, right? <laughs> because, I mean, you got two guys fairly similar in skill sets. You know, they made uh, Deadpool more acrobatic and ninja like, right? But, I mean, they would just blast the heck out of each other. <laughs> only problem is, Frank only has one life to live, right? But uh, it could be interesting, depending on what they do with Deadpool. So, I'll, I'll definitely give this a read. But, another cool pro. Or, uh, show. This is almost like a Dylan kind of. I wonder who did the cover on this. Um, I don't know. Yeah, but it reminds me of the Ennis run and Dylan art right there. So that's a possibility. I'll have to look inside. Uh, but very cool, very cool. You know, the funny thing is, we never knew Deadpool was going to be that big. Uh, I got his X-Force number one line right here somewhere. Not his first, but I mean, we got like the X-Force number one with the trading cards. And the trading cards, Deadpool wasn't a big deal like in the trading cards. He was a little above like Sunspot and Gideon, but he wasn't, I don't think he was more valuable than the X-Force team picture. It was all Shatterstar and Cable people wanted back then. And, you know, who talks about those guys anymore? I guess Cable a little bit since he's in the movie, but anyway, enough rambling here. Uh, we have <laughs> another Civil War here, and we have a signature, and I'm not sure who did the art on this. Fan art cover here.
Doyle comic art. So you have to excuse me. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not up on who did this. I will put it, let me know in the comments and I'll add it to the description below. But uh, pretty awesome, man. This is like um, Weekend Frank, right? <laughs> he's out with some buddies and he's got a jet ski going on. <laughs> and he's like going out for some target rank practice. He looks pretty happy, right? But cool, man. We got signatures and everything. There's artwork on the back. Let's see if I can pull it out of here without making too big a mess. And these nice little guards. Oh, it's actually sealed in there. Okay, we got signed comic book or Carnage art. This is like Carnage Deadpool. Did they mix? No, there's Venom. Oh, check it out, though. That is um, kind of a cover swipe from, I believe it's kind of looks reminiscent of the Jason Goes to Hell um, movie poster, but pretty cool. So it's like Jason meets Venom. So these are all like hybrids. Oh, I got, I'm so slow, man. Okay. Do you respect my intelligence? Yes. All right. <laughs> so we got Carnage as Freddy hybrid here. Fracking incredible. Forgive me. I'm dense sometimes. Okay. Venom as Jason. So wheat. And this one, I'm not so sure. Let me think about this. I'm guessing Leatherface. Ah, yeah, this is Leatherface, right? Because if you see the staples there, I'm assuming he... This Venom has peeled Carnage's skin off, right? To wear on his face, a la Ed Gein, a la uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, right? Freaking amazing, man. So, Doyle Comic Art. Just sweet, sweet stuff. I gotta find you. Uh, looks like you're on Facebook and IG at Doyle Comic Art. I'll hold that really close. I'm sure those guys will laugh at me. He's like, you don't know who this is or whatever. I'm, I'm sorry. And if, if there's like a stage name or something on YouTube, I'm sorry. I missed you, but uh, very impressive. And so cool to get a uh, Punisher, you know, variant. <laughs> but just awesome, man. I like it. Is that my face on there? Sort of. I see a resemblance. Well, I don't have the full beard anymore, but... Uh, he's got my jovial personality and look, so... <laughs> Alright. Oh, I guess I should put that back in to his protective sleeve. Very courteous to send those along, by the way. Okay, check this out. Now, we going back to 12th Center. Submariner and Iron Man. It's a once-in-a-lifetime issue. Don't take my word for it. Believe Stan. I'm with Starfleet. We don't lie. Check it out, man. I don't know anything too much about CGC grading, but I probably they probably go... I'm guessing a five, maybe even a six on this. But just beautiful, man. Kind of a the more streamlined Iron Man look too when they get rid of his little wing horns or face horns or whatever. <laughs> so but nice perspective shots here. Dude, look, I feel like I'm in Grader's notes here, but I mean look at the, the fist coming at you through here. It's very well done. Nice um arm into shoulder into back kind of pose here for a submariner, but Man, oh man. Most cool. I was always a big Submariner fan, and uh, even before he got the reboot, I actually didn't really own any of the reboot. We reviewed Submariner number one on Greatest Notes last year sometime, but I always liked him, and I thought he was kind of underutilized in Marvel. Of course, then he got his own series, so who am I to talk? And now, for the, uh, the frosting on this amazing cake, the coup de gras, which is actually kind of fitting. Listen carefully, and my words will shape images as clear as any TV show. What I'm about to show you here is basically three pieces of my five-piece grail. And I could never afford it growing up, and you know what's funny is I got older and I kind of got out of comics. I never actually went back and collected them. You've got to stop blowing your money like this. Dave? No can do. But everyone knows this iconic art, so let's get into it. We talk about the Punisher miniseries, the one that put the Punisher on the map for mainstream comics collectors. Agreed. I had a lot of these posters because the posters were pretty easy to get a hold of back then because he was so popular. 
Number two, right here from the Zek miniseries. Just, oh man. Oh. <sighs> Brings a tear to me. I I've, I've even got to open it. Now, this is going to take all my skill. <laughs> because... I wanted to see a few things on the inner panel here. Or the inner page. Okay, I couldn't remember if Potts did the editing on this. Yes, he did. Carl Potts did the editing. I don't know if he did any finishes, but of course, you know... Um, so we have... The trifecta of Punisher writings from the mid '80s, right? Or the Punisher works. Stephen Grant on pencil or on writing. Um, John Beatty on inks and Mike Zek on pencils. Same as Big Nothing. So, as as you know, this group did a pretty good job on Punisher. So, amazing. I'll have to show this to John because <laughs> John and I are um, kind of friends a little bit, and let him know that I have a piece of his nostalgia. But that's not all. But wait, there's more. Number four, the great perspective shot of the run there. Notice the use of good shading on, on Punisher's arm, which is a little more in shadow than everything else, but it has a little bit of highlight on his hand so you can see the rope real well and all that. Amazing stuff. Number four. Man, I have pined for this series for so long. Oh, man, you can tell, too. This is, like, original stuff because <laughs> look at the cardboard backing. <laughs> I used to have lots of these. And we still have one more. And a lot of you didn't know this went up to five, but it sure did. So look at the freaking like magenta colors that are just shooting out there and he's as he's plowing away with his saw. I'm trying to see. The see, I like how much detail goes into the shell casings that are coming out. Like they're three D things. They're not just flat. I'm sorry, it's not focusing but basically you can see how round they are with the empty cartridges now being slung out of there um just incredible man what what action scenes this one's um you know you can't see any background stuff going on like you can the other ones but just i don't know this series was so important for comics at the time it was so big and it was i don't know if they realized what a big property they had on their hands with this but they they, they threw a freaking perfect game um with this run because, like I said, it took a, a character that, you know, it was fairly simple to write. You could write it however you wanted to because there wasn't a ton of history of lore. He only had a few appearances, I believe, before that in, like, the ASM series. After his original debut, he kind of took a hiatus for a long time. So it's a great blank slate which, with, with which to write on. And it was just around the good time when people started considering comics more of a adult medium if you will they kind of you know people get it out of their out of their heads that things were like archie comics and, and that sort of thing and it was a more serious medium so you had and of course more serious writers at the time too but amazing stuff man steve i can't thank you enough for this great great aok -okay. i don't know i am not worthy to throw back there for some a movie i've never seen but remember the commercials well but just incredible man that the kindness that uh, people in this community have and, and once again, my my channel is not heavily dedicated to comics. It's it's small. I don't really collect that much anymore. Nothing of the new stuff. So it really um, it warms the cockles of my heart to have people in the comics community always supporting my channel uh, and sending me you know random AOKs every now and then. It's 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 it just shows you there's a lot of good people out there, man. And um, it's, I don't know. I just I can't tell you the depths of my appreciation. And man, such a cool Punisher pack too. Obviously, he's been watching my videos a long time. Knows what a big Punisher mark I am, right? <laughs> so I'll have to talk about this on Friday night when I do live. But uh, yeah, man, just such a such a cool one. So I'll go through it real quick again on what I got sent, and um, I'll just do it in reverse order, and then sign off. Um, Punisher Mirror Series number five of five. Number four of five. Ah, the Zack Beatty goodness. Two of five. I mean, he's even slapping the cartridges. Man, I just love the detail that goes into those covers. Zek was a monster. So was Beatty. Those two were inseparable for a good reason. Uh, Iron Man Submariner, number one, 12th Center. Uh, I hope you didn't have to pay too much money to get this done. But um, amazing Civil War II art, blank cover art. 
with accompanying hybrid card slides. I gotta maybe get these framed because that's just too cool. I love how they take the, the Venom character and uh, the Carnage character are both pretty maniacal characters, right? And make them into horror icon like hybrids. Very cool. Uh, Deadpool first Punisher number three. Which I'm almost willing to bet that's a Dylan cover there, but I, I don't know for sure. I'll have to look it up. Book I'd never heard of, but is so stoked to have. Punisher Holiday Special number one. Foil. Like I said, it doesn't show up too well here, but trust me, it's these are foil ornaments, so pretty cool, man. Not the typical Punisher like cover you would think, a Christmas tree with ornaments, right? It just works. It almost looks like he's like breaking into the house or whatever, and he's getting ready to kill like a mob boss or something who's trying to celebrate Christmas. Punisher Armory number two. Recipient of my cover of the week, several cover of the weeks ago. And Punisher Armory number one. Sweet, sweet Jim Lee action there. Freaking amazing run. What action scenes he had. Also got sent um, Jake's, Jake's Blues Blistering. So be listening to that, of course. And the most important part of all is just the camaraderie and, you know, the, the, the good nature of people on YouTube for the most part and in social media, at least the ones I surround myself with or try to. So it's just incredibly appreciated. And um, yeah, man, let me know when you're ready for your music review and I'll, I'll, I'll try to do your song justice. So anyway, I'll go ahead and wrap it up for now. I know people don't watch me slobber and slather on <laughs> about my appreciation for AOKs like this and, and the people who send them. Would you please stop that? What? Flattering me. Don't you hear yourself? You're fawning all over me. But it's it's true. It's uh, there's such a great community out there, and you know, and Steve's always been one of the good eggs. So appreciate it once again, and you have my undying gratitude. So anyway, <laughs> a few of phrase notwithstanding. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh yeah. Also, sorry. Uh, also, in in honor of the AOK, I decided to uh, show my original backdrop back there, which is usually hiding behind the green screen. And I'm thinking about painting the wall green so I don't have to fool with it anymore, but we'll see. But anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, until next time, this is Genome. I'm oh, just loving him some Zek and Baby. Out. <laughs>